my name is Maggie Jo White. I'm a part of the Phoenix Forge Club, Union County South Central District, and I'm very excited to be talking about one of my favorite things, the theater arts. I'd like to talk just a little bit about how the current COVID-19 situation has affected the theater community. Obviously, Forge County Activity Day, states and districts look very different this year, and all of our lives have been affected in so many different ways. Live theater has been hit hard due to needing a large group of people to make an audience, cast size, as well as production crew. My home theater, Matthew's Playhouse of the Performing Arts, has been closed since March 13th. We got in one last rehearsal for our spring show, and then we had to postpone all four of our school theater shows mid-production, and our summer show has been canceled. While all this has been very disappointing, what I've learned is the theater community is very strong and resilient. Broadway professionals, as well as local theaters, have been offering lots of online classes, free videos, and activities to keep young people connected to theater and growing in their art. My own theater, Matthew's Playhouse, has been offering stay-at-home fun Fridays. A few Fridays ago, me and some theater friends put on a production of Virtual Complaint Department and Lemonade. I had so much fun. I was a cat burglar. While they may not be a part of 4-H, they are doing a great job of making the best better and serving their community well. Some elements of theater I will talk about today are the process of a pro theater production from an actor's point of view, how participating in the theater arts benefits school-age kids, and my personal goals for theater. For the performer, the process of any theater production usually begins with the auditions. However, the process actually begins well in advance of, of the auditions. According to the production manager at Matthew's Playhouse, Cassie Proden, the initial planning period starts 12 weeks out from the opening date. This includes meetings with the directors and concept meetings with the set and costume designers. From auditions to opening night, a show can usually, mount, usually be mounted in about eight to 10 weeks. I was, this past January slash February, I was in a produc production of Pinocchio. Because Matthew's Playhouse already had the sets and props in stock, we were able to get the show up sooner, in about four to six weeks. As I mentioned before, auditioning for the show is usually the first part of, with the actor's involvement with the show. Auditions take place over two to three evenings, depending on the roles available. As an actor, you when you arrive at the audition, you check in and receive a number. Your number, number will then be called in a group of about eight or 10 people. As a group, you will as a group, you'll be led into the room with a director and stage manager. If it's a musical, then the choreographer and music director will also be present. One at a time, each actor in the group will say a prepared monologue or do a cold read from the script. If it's a musical, then each actor will individually sing a prepared song and the whole group will do a dance combo. After the audition is over, then comes the hard part. The waiting. You are waiting to hear if you were asked for a callback or if you were offered a part. A callback is when the director needs to see more of you, whether it's to sing or to dance or to read for a specific part or two. A callback does not mean you are guaranteed a part. Once parts are offered and accepted, rehearsals begin almost immediately. Rehearsals usually run three to five days a week, three to six hours each rehearsal. Not all actors are called to all rehearsals. The rehearsal schedule is given by the stage manager. The stage manager acts as a liaison between the actors, directors, and designers, keeping organized with all the show information, meeting the big personalities, while maintaining the day-to-day -day rehearsal schedule can be a big job, but is rewarding in the end. Being a stage manager is a job I'd love to do in the future. The director gives stage directions to the actors for each scene. Stage directions are given from the actor's point of view. So stage left is the actor's stage left facing the audience. Same goes with right. Upstage is actually the back of the stage and downstage is the front of the stage. The reason for this is in the Middle Ages, the stage was actually on a, um, on a hill. So the upstage would be actually higher than downstage in order for the whole audience to be able to see the show. And this here is a script that, as an actor in the script, you write your blocking given to the direct, from the director. At some point during rehearsals, it's time for load-in. Loading is an exciting day because that's when the sets and props are taken from the shop and are installed on stage. As actors, we now get to see our actual sets and props on stage. Also, each actor is meets with the costume designer to be fit for his or her costume. The next big milestone of the production is tech rehearsal. 
tech reversal can sometimes be long because that's when the sound and light directors need to get their cues right. So sometimes the actors on stage will have to hold and wait until the sound or light cue is correct. The final piece of the puzzle is dress rehearsal. In dress rehearsal, everyone is in costume. Being in costume really connects the actor to the character and the character to the show. Most shows have two, three dress rehearsals before opening night to make any adjustments to the costumes and to perfect blocking, lighting, and sound. It's very exciting as an actor to feel the show come together. The big moment, opening night. Opening night can be full of excitement, nerves, and chaos, but the show always comes together well. Some shows also have school show performances, as well as public shows. For example, when I was in Pinocchio in February, we performed 14 school shows and five public shows. As an actor, the kids, it's so fun to perform full school shows. The kids are a great audience. I love hearing their reactions. They usually don't hold back. After the last performance, which can be sad for the actors, an event called Strike happens. Strike is essentially the opposite of load-in. The set is disassembled and all pieces and props are taken back to the shop. Costumes are returned, the stage is swept, and is ready for the next production process to begin all over again. There is nothing like being on stage. The benefits of the theater arts to school-age kids are numerous, but I've chosen three benefits that stand out the most for me to discuss. The first is the theater arts improves reading and communication. By reading and rereading the script in rehearsal, kids learn new vocabulary. Through the rehearsal process, kids also learn to speak up and to use their stage voice. So not only that their story, and kids also learn to enunciate. So not only that their story can be heard, but understood. Theater arts strengths confidence. Jerry Seinfeld once said, according to most studies, people's number one fear is public speaking. Number two is death. Does that sound right? Theater, much like 4-H, provides kids with opportunities to face their fears and work through them with, this, with a group and build a sense of self. From the shyest to the most outgoing kid, theater can and does help everyone. Theater arts also embraces and values the unique. Theater sometimes, acting sometimes requests that we portray interesting characters to tell a story or to entertain an audience. Most theater kids, myself included, would describe themselves as weird. The theater provides a comfortable place to be ourselves. I felt such camaraderie and acceptance with the last cast I was a part of in Pinocchio. I will never forget it. We still keep in touch, but I do hope to see him again soon. I asked the executive director of Matthew's Playhouse, June Bayless, what she thinks is the ben biggest benefit of the theater arts to school age kids. And this is what she had to say. Kids learn so many skills doing theater, teamwork, sharing, taking turns, increased vocabulary, storytelling, reasoning, presence, and patience. But most of all, it allows someone to walk in someone else's shoes without suffering any of the real life hardships. If nothing else, theater teaches compassion. I just have to add that studies show that attending live theater gives kids an understanding and empathy that cannot be achieved by just reading a play in a classroom. My goals for the theater arts. I like to audition for more shows in the area and at Matthew's Playhouse as soon as that's possible. I would love to be, gain the skills to become an assistant stage manager and to learn to how to do sound and lighting for theater shows. My long dream goal would be in a Broadway show. I don't know if that will happen, but I do know that community theater will always be a part of my life. Today I talked about the production of a theater, the process of a theater production from an actor's point of view, how participating in the theater arts benefits school-aged kids, and my personal goals for theater. I like to close with a single slide of a light bulb left burning whenever a theater is dark. It's called a ghost light, mostly for safety, but theater folk are a superstitious lot. Never wish an actor good luck. It's always break a leg, avoid whistling backstage, and do not say Macbeth, I mean that Scottish play. It is cursed. Theater has been hit hard during this crisis. Our passion, creativity, and drive is still center stage. Here's a ghost light to let the world know that we will be back. My resources are June Bayless, Executive Director and Artistic Director at Matthews Playhouse of the Performing Arts, Cassie Proden, Production Manager at Matthews Playhouse of the Performing Arts, websites patch.com, kidsu.com, and sciencedaily.com. Thank you for listening. This is the part where I would say, are there any questions? But the judges from districts have asked me a few questions, so I answer them. What is the studies that you mentioned? The study that I mentioned was published by teachers from the University of Arkansas, 
Department of Education reform. The teachers found that viewing of production leads to enhanced knowledge of the plot, increased vocabulary, and improved ability to read the emo emotions of others. Do all theaters have a ghost light right now? Most theaters will leave a ghost light, single light burning because the stage gets really dark and there are many ways to hurt yourself. Props, trapdoors, stairs, holes, and the stage are all dangers on a dark stage. It is also said that every theater has a ghost light, has a ghost. The ghost light provides light so the ghost can see and perform on stage. Do you see yourself pursuing theater professionally? I totally love theater and everything that has to do with it. My goal is to perform on Broadway, but honestly, I just love performing. I'm, and I love making connections with the cast and crew of each show I'm in. I also love teaching, so maybe one day I could teach theater. What is your, what is your pa intended path to Broadway? My path to get to Broadway would to gain lots of experience performing, taking classes, doing intensives, and learning all I can about lighting, sound, and stage managing. I like to minor in college in theater, if not majoring in theater. For females especially, performing in Broadway is very competitive. So the more skills I have in all aspects of theater, the better my chance of being on Bro in a Broadway show. Thank you.